Welcome to Lamis.com in our lab video series on Cisco Prime Infrastructure 3.1. You can find a complete list of Prime video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. First of all, I would like to welcome you guys to our first video series on Cisco Prime Infrastructure. And the version that we will be using throughout this lab video series is 3.1. Prime Infrastructure is not a new product and has been around for quite a number of years now. Just to give you a background history, Prime Infrastructure came from evolution of two Cisco products, and they are Cisco LMS, which was designed for wired device management, and Cisco NCS, also previously known as WCS, which was meant for wireless device management. Prime Infrastructure is a member of a larger Prime product family that includes, for example, Prime Data Center Network Manager, or DCNM, Prime Collaboration, and Prime Network Analysis Module. But even so, when someone refers to Prime, most people implies they are Prime Infrastructure. In this video series, we will cover what you need to know to fully configure and operate Prime Infrastructure 3.1, and this includes both Y and wireless. And as the first video of this series, we will begin by going through an installation of Prime on VMware ESXi. For this installation video, we have a very basic lab setup. We've got on the left-hand side, Windows 2012, Domain Controller DNS Server and Certificate Authority Server. And we're also going to be using it as our jump box with RDP into it at the IP of 172.16.32.40, which is sitting on VLAN 32. And then we are going to install a Prime Infrastructure 3.1 name LM-Prime1 at the IP of .106 on that same VLAN. We also have a switch, switch one that provides network connectivity with the loopback IP of 172.16.0.1, and that's that loopback zero. And we're also gonna use that switch as our NTP server. Before you can begin the installation of Prime, there are some prerequisites that needs to be fulfilled. First of all, you need to have ESXi version 5.5 or later install. And this is only if you would like to run the VM version. Obviously, if you have the physical appliance, that would not be applicable. Next, you need to decide on the size of your deployment, and you can easily refer to a Prime Infrastructure 3.1 Quick Start Guide. And let me bring up that guy right here. Cisco Prime Infrastructure 3.1 Quick Start Guide, and you can jump over to the section of Virtual Appliance Option. This table right here gives you an idea of Hardware resource requirements according to deployment size is available with this Express, Express Plus, Standard, or Professional. You can just refer to this table in terms of CPU, DRAM or memory, hard drive, capacity that's required, and the throughput of the disk I.O. So you need to select those accordingly. And the way to do that, you refer to another table down below that gives you an idea of the number of network devices and connection per seconds for a different type of activities. So hopefully at this point you have some rough idea of the number of network devices for each type. As you can see, whether it's access point, lightweight or autonomous, wire devices, NAM, wireless LAN controller, wire client, wireless client, MSE, if you would like to do the mobility services engine integration for location services or the services available on MSE, for example, changing clients, and you can easily refer to the number under each column as long as your requirement does not exceed the column, then you can basically go with that deployment size. Otherwise, you probably need to move up to the next available, right? And also the first four columns are for VMware virtual machine. And then the last column is refers to if you were to have the hardware appliance generation two or gen two in the form of UCS server. And if we scroll down a little bit further, there's one thing that I want to make a note of, which is the compliance feature that is only supported on professional version of the virtual appliance or OVA, as well as the Gen 2 appliance. So if you have a need or plan to take advantage of the compliance features on Prime, then you need to have the professional version installed. Right? For the most part, if you have the physical appliance, then you don't really need to worry about the sizing as much as the box itself already makes that determination for you. Now, once you have selected your deployment size, you can go ahead to cisco.com and download Prime Infrastructure OVA. And we can just go to cisco.com here and show you where you can download that. You can just type Prime 3.1 and then select Prime Infrastructure 3.1, which is the latest version. 
right now. So you can see here, 3.1, you have an option to download an ISO if you're dealing with the Gen 2 appliance. For us, we are doing a virtual appliance. That means you need to download this .ova file, right? So you definitely want to download the .ova file to a machine that is on the high-speed connection to your ESXi server, since you're gonna to need to push that file or deploy it in real time over the network. So to minimize the time of the file transfer and the deployment and also minimize the risk of something going wrong, you definitely want to put them on the same high speed LAN. Right, then you need to determine some of the network parameters, whether they're IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, domain name, DNS server. So those are the general network parameters that you will be prompted for, as you see in a second here, to enter during the installation. Right, and finally, you need to make sure that the NTP server that you'll be using, as well as default gateway, they're both uh, reachable on the network. Although I believe you can bypass a step of the installation, even though they're not, but it's still good practice to have them available. All right, now to begin our installation, you can lock into your ESXi, whether it's through the vSphere client or the web client, if you have the vCenter. Here we are using the vSphere client. To deploy the OVA, you click File and Deploy OVF Template. Of course, that step will be slightly different if you were to, are using Web Client. Hopefully, you have some familiarity with ESXi. Next, you need to select the .ova file that you have downloaded. Here, we put it under a directory on the desktop called Prime. Let me click Browse just to show, and that's the same file that we saw earlier on Cisco.com right there that we have already downloaded and select the file and click next then spend a couple seconds to review the product information there are prime infrastructure virtual appliance version 3.1 by cisco the download size is 3.5 gig and it's going to take up almost 8 gig for the thin provision and 300 for the thick provision okay click next and you're seeing pretty much the same thing as what we saw earlier under the quick start guide in terms of hardware sizing. So for the Express, you require four CPU core, 12 gig of memory, all the way up to the Pro. Make sure you note it right here, the resource reservation that will be done is gonna be half of the resources required by the CPU and memory. So click accept to acknowledge that and then click next. Now we have to give a name to the virtual appliance. We said we're going to call it lm-prime1. Click next, and this is where you select the deployment size. Since we might be talking about the compliance features later on in the video series, we want to make sure that we select the professional. If that's not a requirement for you and you just want to play around with the product in the lab, then you can select the lowest level, which is Express. Here we are going to, going to select professional. So it's going to use 16 CPU, 24 gig of memory with the 12 gig being reserved, and then 1.2 terabyte worth of storage. And then Cisco gives a recommendation that if you want to maximize the performance of the appliance, then you want to reserve 100% of CPU and memory. Click next, then you can choose your data store. We are going to select our local data store. Make sure you have sufficient this space, which we do, then we'll click next. Since we are doing this in the lab and we don't really care as much in terms of performance, we are going to select thin provision just to reserve our disk space. Next, you need to assign a network to the adapter of the appliance. We are going to assign it to VLAN 32 which is a server VLAN, and click Next. Do a final review, make sure everything looks good, and then you can click Finish. All right, so what's happening right now is the deployment of the virtual appliance, and this is where it's pushing the appliance image from our local machine, which is our jump box, our domain controller right here, to the ESXi. All right, so this is just going to take a couple minutes. And it looks like we have about two minutes to go. So what I'm going to do here is to do a, a quick pause of the videos and we'll come back when the deployment process is complete. 